concerns tonight, but first, let's just recap the tragic story that sparked this debate. What would you say to those parents who still refuse to vaccinate their children? You're not only putting your child at risk, you're putting every child out there at risk. This is Dana. Dana, Dana who? Dana Elizabeth McCaffrey. Oh, she's beautiful. One minute she's this beautiful little girl. And then, you know, she, she, she looked like someone had strangled her. Dana McCaffrey's life was too short. She was born perfectly healthy, but at four weeks old, Dana caught whooping cough. It's, it is really difficult to watch any baby go through that. I think the risk benefit for vaccination is firmly established. The benefit far outweighs the risk. We have a medical community that's saying if you get measles, if you get whooping cough, you're going to die from it. Well, where is the information from that? It's just not right. It's just not right that my little girl is in a grave. I didn't want to be the vaccination crusader, you know? Nor is it our responsibility. It's, it's a responsibility of governments and they need to take charge. I just want my girl. Yeah, the McCaffrey family is with us tonight and we'll come to them shortly. We're also joined by Professor Peter McIntyre from the National Immunisation and Surveillance Centre and anti-vaccine GP Dr Giselle Cook. Dr Cook, you object to me calling you an anti-vaccine GP. Absolutely, that's in no way an accurate representation of what my advice is to my patients. Despite not having given a vaccination for my 18 years. that I'm pro-choice. But you haven't um, given a vaccination for 18 that's years. That's my personal choice in my practice because I do not provide risky medical interventions to my patients and I consider vaccination as one of those. Do you think it's anti-vaccine, uh, Professor? Well, I think it's Russian roulette, really, because, sure, um, the number of children these days with good medical care who actually tragically die from these diseases largely because vaccination has diminished them so much is very small, but you don't know whether your child will be one of those unlucky ones. There's nothing in terms of fantastic diet, great lifestyle that's going to protect them. Only vaccination will protect them and sure, there may be no problem, but it's Russian roulette as to whether your child's the one that dies or not. The medical profession always talks about risks. Exactly. What are the risks? That's what parents really... That, that's why we're here today, because parents aren't sure about these risks. Well, one of the real dilemmas, I suppose, for vaccination is that it's been a victim of its own success. So vaccines have been so successful at turning diseases that people were really fearful of, like polio in the 1950s, into things which are in the history books, that we're not reminded about why it's so important. And, and we see people who come to our country as refugees or, or immigrants from countries that aren't as lucky as our own, they can't wait to get vaccinated because they realise the value of it from what they've seen in their own country. But we don't see that because things are going so well. Ms Dora, you want to say something, obviously? In 1970, when the measles vaccine was introduced in Australia, there were three deaths in the country from measles. Right now, the government says there are 12 deaths a year. So I don't see that there's been any benefit from the measles vaccine. You, you also did say that you were going to bring along uh, a, a case uh, of autism and also another case uh, of, of a child uh, suffering fit disorders. Um, neither of those cases eventuated, Ms. Well, Dory. actually, I gave those numbers to Gabrielle, but she has not contacted the parents, one of them in Melbourne and another one in Sydney. No, she has contacted them, and, and they didn't want to speak out. And I think this is one of the problems um, from your network, that you, that you often do uh, say that there are these cases, uh, but they never really eventuate. Well, we've reported all of our reactions to the government. Since 2002, we were entitled to... And, and yet the government says... Keep vaccinating. Well, the government says keep vaccinating, but we're looking at the government's own information. Well, there's a couple of inaccuracies about what Merrill's just said. So, firstly, it's completely untrue that there are deaths from measles. There hasn't been a death from measles in over 20 years. And yet, if we look back in the 1950s, before measles vaccination, there were 20 or 30 deaths a year. So, um, so I'm not sure where Merrill's getting her information the from. Was but there's, uh, there's, there, there have been no deaths from measles in Australia for a long time. And in fact, w w one of the reasons there was a kind of tail of deaths was there's this very nasty thing called SSPE, which is basically brain damage you get 
from measles that happens about 20 years after you get measles. You don't get that from the vaccine. You do get it from measles. And so there will still be deaths recorded as measles 20 years later. But actual deaths from measles itself, no. We have, um, we have twins in the studio. This is Levi. Yeah. And Lakeham, his twin brother, has just, ha just left us. Oh, um, no, sorry. No, this, this is Lakeham. 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 <laughs> this is Lakeham. Um, now, Lakeham uh, has not been immunised at all. No. Just behind Lakeham, um, we have a mother with a 15-week-old yeah. who is just recovering from whooping cough, um, who has been vaccinated. Let me ask you, if I may, Benjamin's mother, do, do you worry that you're now in a studio two seats away from a little boy that hasn't been vaccinated? I do. Because after seeing what he went through with whooping cough and how awful it is, it does worry me. I worry about him going to childcare centres and then back to school, worrying what he can catch from children who haven't been vaccinated. Mm. And I don't mean in any offence against his mother, that's her choice, and against her beautiful boy, but it's my first gut reaction is to think I don't want him near them. And Lakeham's mum, would you reply, please? Um, I, don't, I don't think I know enough to comment. I mean, I've researched as much as I been able to after having them um, and I've decided not to but I think it's... But not knowing enough? Is that, is that good no, enough? No, well I, th I, think, I think it's personal choice and I think fair enough, that's great um, but personally I've chosen not to. I, I just <laughs> want to go quickly if I may um, to, to Tony and David McCaffrey now th they weren't very comfortable um, about coming here tonight uh, because after our story last week they were inundated with hate mail 